This entertainment news is from out of this world. Tom Cruise is planning to shoot scenes for a new movie from the International Space Station. <laughs> Which, good for him. He's <laughs> finally getting to work a little bit closer to his home planet. This is nice. This is... It's all about that work-life balance. <laughs> no, but seriously, people, Tom Cruise stays winning, right? He's one of the greatest movie stars and stuntmen. He's doing things that no one has ever done before. Just success after success. So... Maybe Scientology is right? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> In other space news, remember how NASA slammed a spaceship into an asteroid to test whether they could change its course? Well, yesterday, they officially announced that it was a success. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the asteroid wasn't actually headed to Earth, and they hit it, and now it is. <laughs> so good work, everyone, yeah. You just clapped for us dying. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm not really sure this was all necessary, though, like, to, like, send a, like, a, a vessel up to hit the asteroid, spend all that money. Like, if we're honest, one immigrant mother could have done the same thing <laughs> just by holding up a slipper. That's all she needed to do. <laughs> just be like, come to Earth and see what happens. Come to Earth and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Turn around. Turn that, turn that, turn that asteroid around. <laughs> In... In sports news, NFL star Devontae Adams of the Raiders has now been charged with misdemeanor assault for shoving a sideline photographer on Monday. Yeah, luckily, the photographer was attended to by NFL doctors, so he'll be fine. I mean, he died, but the doctor is still catering to play next Sunday. <laughs> they said the game must go on. All right, let's move on to some of the biggest stories of the day, starting off with a major story about the gig economy. You know, the gig economy, the reason your Tinder date had to make a stop to deliver Shake Shack? Well, over the past decade, <laughs> More and more people have been making a living at jobs where the companies they work for are technically not their employers. But now, America's most famous employee might be changing that. All right, a potential game changer for millions of gig workers. The Biden administration proposing a new rule that would reclassify millions of them as company employees. The new rule could have wide-ranging impact on profits at Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and other companies that rely on, on contractors. With that employee label, workers would be eligible for protections like a minimum hourly wage, overtime pay, jobless benefits, and workers' comp. Wow. If Biden gets this done, it's gonna shake up the world of apps completely. Because you realize right now, the reason delivery and car apps can take in billions of dollars is partly because they don't technically have employees, which is great for them. Right? It's the same way some people aren't technically in a relationship, but they still get all the benefits. <laughs> They get the sleepovers, but then they don't have to take care of you when you're sick, you know? It's just like, oh, I'm sorry you're not feeling well. I guess I'll see you when you're ready to smash. Bye! <laughs> but... What Biden is suggesting is that these companies have to give their workers the benefits that employees would get. And I know that you'll agree with me, no one deserves it more than them. Right, because these people are hard workers. They're driving everywhere, they're biking, they're, they're delivering, they're taste testing our food before it gets to us. <laughs> this is hard work. <laughs> so this is a big step for a lot of people in the gig economy. But don't forget, there are drawbacks to being considered an employee. Yeah, like for instance, people singing you happy birthday at work. <laughs> yeah, you'll love it initially, but once they start on the, how old are you now? <laughs> How old are you? You'll be like, I have health care, but at what cost? <laughs> All right, let's move on to some news about the midterms. The reason your inbox is now full of emails with the subject line, send me $4 or I'll kill myself. <laughs> let's catch up on some of the tightest races in our ongoing coverage of Vote Demic 2022. <laughs> Right now, any single Senate race in America could determine which party could take control of the Senate, giving them the power to get nothing done for the next two years. <laughs> and few races are closer right now than the one in Pennsylvania. On the Republican side, you have Dr. Oz, famous TV doctor and proof that even Oprah makes mistakes. And on the Democratic <laughs> side, you have John Fetterman, former lieutenant governor and dude who's just going off in the mosh pit. <laughs> this race has hinged on a number of issues, like crime, abortion, and the fact that Dr. Oz has only lived in Pennsylvania for less than two years. Which, is that even a real Pennsylvanian, huh? <laughs> has this dude even been in a fistfight in a Wawa parking lot yet? Hmm? <laughs> but now another question has begun to take center stage in the race. 
John Fetterman's health. Back in May, Fetterman suffered a stroke. And even though he's been back on the campaign trail, he still hasn't fully recovered. And now, his first major interview since the stroke has everyone talking. Can voters trust that you will be able to do this job on day one? Yeah, of, of course. This is Pennsylvania Democratic Senate candidate John Fetterman's first in-person sit-down interview since a stroke sidelined him from the campaign trail for months. That auditory processing where you know, I'll hear someone speaking, but sometimes I'll be able to be uh, precise on what exactly that they're saying. I use captioning. His campaign required that he be allowed to use a transcription program on his computer during our interview. I always thought I was pretty empathetic, uh, uh, emphatic. Uh, I think I was very, excuse me, empathetic. Uh, you know, that's an example of the stroke, empathetic. Yeah. I, I always thought I was very empathetic uh, before having a stroke. But now, after having that stroke, I really understand, you know, much more kind of the challenges that Americans have day in and day out. So, yeah, this interview came out. And now, obviously, you've got people on the right saying Fetterman forgot a word and he can't understand speech, so he's not fit for the Senate. And look, this is politics. So I get it. People will jump on any weakness to give their party an advantage. I understand that. But let's be real, people. If stumbling over a word every now and again <laughs> disqualified you from politics, <laughs> America wouldn't have had a president for the past six years. <laughs> huh? Let's be honest. In fact, in fact, at least Fetterman acknowledged that he messed up the word and he corrected himself. Yeah, Biden wouldn't have noticed, and he would have just said, <laughs> <have, have> Negroes, man. <laughs> and Trump, can you imagine Trump? Trump wouldn't have even acknowledged it at all. Like, Trump would have tried to convince us that he actually got the word right. He'd be like, I always knew that I was emphatic, and I was, and also empathetic. I was emphatically <laughs> empathetic, and so emphatic about being empathetic. Emphatic about emphysema. Do we love emphysema, folks? We love it so much. And also, as for needing to read captions because he has a troubled understanding of speech now, I, I don't know. Is that really a deal breaker? Huh? In fact, if you ask me, I think America needs more people in politics who actually know how to read. Maybe that's just how I see it. <laughs> if anything, if anything, needing captions is super relatable these days. Yeah. Have you tried watching House of Dragon without captions? <laughs> it's impossible. I mean, half the characters have the same name. Aegon, tell Aemon to get Rhaenyra to warn Rhaenyra about Aegon's dream. But don't tell Viserys, he'll tell Jocerius. Did you get that? No, I didn't. I don't know what that was. <laughs> so look, so look. I'm not, I'm not vouching for Fetterman over Dr. Oz or anything like that, but I do think this whole debate is veering into the territory of saying that people with disabilities cannot be lawmakers, which is trash, all right? Especially since America already has disabled lawmakers serving right now. <laughs> it shouldn't be disqualified, right? Dan Crenshaw is missing an eye. Tammy Duckworth lost both her legs, right? And Mitch McConnell, he's literally melting all the time. <laughs> but has he let that hold him back? No! He gets up every day and he vows to keep on working until the moment his face slides right off of his skull. No, oh, that's right. Every night I tie my skin into a ponytail. <laughs> now, even though the Senate is getting the most attention, there's also a heated race for mayor of Los Angeles, where Congresswoman Congress, uh, Karen Bass is facing off against real estate tycoon Rick Caruso. And in their final debate last night, there was one moment that got everyone's attention. And it's when the moderator mentioned that Karen Bass is a person of color, and then Rick Caruso said, uh, me too. And this question goes for the both of you. The next mayor of Los Angeles will be either an African-American woman or a white man. I'm Italian. Italian-American. <laughs> Thank you. That's Latin. Thank you. Latin. <laughs> you're not white, you're Latin? Get the f*** out of here, man. Huh? What is that? What is that? We, we all know what this is about, right? This guy's running in Los Angeles, so now he's saying, I'm Italian, which is a Latin language, so I'm basically Latino, right? <laughs> and look, I, I'm, not, I'm not claiming to be an expert, but if you tell someone you're grabbing Latin food, 
I think they'll be pretty pissed off when you come back with Olive Garden, right? We can all agree on that. <laughs> so I think we can all agree that Rick Caruso is just bullshitting here. Because I promise you, when he gets pulled over by the cops, he's not like, hola, officer, what is the problem, senor? <laughs> What's funny about this whole thing is that when they came to America, Italians weren't considered white, but then they fought for, like, 100 years to change that. Yeah. And let's be honest, any debate was definitely over by the time the Mario trailer came out last week. <laughs> yeah, because Chris Pratt is out here like, it is I, Mario. <laughs> so, the Senate races are heating up, the mayoral races are heating up, but it turns out, even in the animal kingdom, my friends, Elections are being fought tooth and nail. An update on Fat Bear Week. It's the popular bracket. It has been rocked by a big cheating scandal. So each year, people vote on the beefiest bear in Alaska's Katmai National Park before hibernation season. Well, the National Park tweeted, quote, like bears stuff their face with fish, our ballot box two has been stuffed. There were thousands of fake votes for bear 747, but even with the fake votes removed, 747 weighed in at 1,400 pounds and still won the semifinal round. Now 747 will face off against Bear 901 for the final round. Voting starts this morning. Yes, my friends, it appears that a voting scandal has tainted the dignity <laughs> of Fat Bear Week. <laughs> and don't you dare laugh, don't you laugh. If we cannot trust the sanctity of the fat bear vote, then what can we trust? <laughs> I honestly don't understand this. Who would even care enough about a fat bear election <laughs> to try and cheat and stuff the ballot box? Who is this person? Who's like, oh, I've got to rig this. Like, why? The fattest bear doesn't get any power if it wins. It's not like a bear is going to win the election and then cut taxes. Wah, wah, I use my claws to cut the taxes. Wah, and now for the zoning laws. What are you doing? <laughs> And by the way, I feel like this story is almost the perfect encapsulation of American culture, right? Because when other countries engage with nature, there's a reverence. You know, it's like, the mighty brown bear, wary of the coming chill, hunkers down for the winter months. <laughs> but with America, it's like, look at this chunky boy, look at him. <laughs> He's so chunky, I just want to, oh, 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 dude, oh my God, oh, he just ate my arm. Take a picture. <laughs> All right, that's it for the headlines, but before we go to a quick break, let's check in on the stock market with our finance expert. Michael Costa, everybody. <laughs> Michael, what is happening in the market today? Well, like a fat bear on a scale, I'm crushing it, everybody. I mean, and I got a hot tip for you. All right, I got All a right, hot tip cool. for you, I got a hot tip for you. But uh, before we get into this fat bear week, you know, here's a question. Why are people voting? And we have the information from the scale. Doesn't that tell us who the fattest bear is? <laughs> Am I the only one watching this story? We have a scale. The scale tells us who the fattest bear is. There's no need to vote, okay? Oh, officer, officer, I know your radar gun says I was going 100, but can we just uh, take a vote on this first? I mean, come on. Well, let's call it what it is, Trevor. These bears, they're depressed. Think about it. They overeat. They sleep for months. They always seem upset. They freak out when you point a hunting rifle at their cub. I mean, they're unhinged, dude. All right? That's an interesting let's, way to see bears. Let's talk, let's talk about... You want, to, you want to talk about money? Yeah, let's talk about money. Let's talk about money, Trevor. Uber and Lyft. Now, I'm an expert on this topic. I actually use Uber Black, Trevor, because I'm an ally. So, that's for you. No, <laughs> but... Look, that's not a joke. That's not a joke. Look. Okay. Let's look. As you can see on this chart, after President Biden announced that gig workers should be considered employees, Uber and Lyft shares have taken a ride of their own, okay? Now, this chart also perfectly demonstrates my enjoyment of making conversation with my Uber driver, okay? <laughs> At the beginning, it's fine, you know? Offers me a mint, gives me a bottle of water for a baby. But look, it, it starts to drop right here when he asks me to come sit up front. Oh, God, right? And another big drop in value again when he finds out I work at The Daily Show and asks me if I'm the guy that goes to the Trump rallies. But look, <laughs> his value increases when I learn he used to be a doctor and I can ask him free medical questions. But turns out he's actually just a chiropractor, so he loses all his value. But then I find out that he has prescription meds in his trunk for me, so it goes back up. And, you know, Mikey likey, okay? <laughs> so... 
Now, thank you. I offered you a hot tip, and it's usually a financial tip, but I feel like I have to explain this because it keeps happening to me. If you're my Uber driver and I fall asleep in the back seat, do not try to wake me up. I will bite you, okay? <laughs> back to you, Trevor, my brother. Michael Costa, everybody.